Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded sports cars in terms of top speed. We're quickly going to go over the slowest vehicles right now and as always the position counter is in the top left with the actual top speed the car achieved in the top right. This video only focuses on straight line performance so if you're interested in racing where braking, cornering and acceleration are all relevant check the link in the description for the lap time testing series and if you want to know more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. So back again with the sports class obviously we did the lap time testing video yesterday and here we are with the top speeds where We've got 44 vehicles in this class, which is absolutely huge. A lot of vehicles that really should be in different classes because their top speeds and their lap times as well really aren't that great, especially with the Chameleon. Obviously, it's an electric vehicle, so it has a terrible top speed in the last place with 102 miles per hour, which is very slow. The Shafter LWB here in 39th with 109 miles per hour really should be in the sedans class, but I'll talk about that when we get to the sedans video. Yeah, there's a lot of sports cars that don't have that great top speed but then on the other hand as we get further up the order we're going to see a lot of sports cars that are very similar in terms of top speed and we do have a lot of vehicles in this class that are doubles of each other you know two 9Fs, two Jesters, two Massacros, things like that but even among cars that aren't necessarily doubles of each other they, they do share very similar top speeds and we're not going to be seeing top speeds that reach what we saw from the supercars class those top speeds are definitely going to be unachievable when it comes to sports cars so in general they're all a little bit slower than that same as same is true with lap times of course but the cars that we're seeing here at this point of the uh, video really aren't quite on the pace of, of the ones that we'll see later on. 112, 114, 110 miles per hour, things like that. They really aren't able to compete in, at the top of the sport class when it comes to top speed. Having said that, at this point we are only 10 miles per hour slower than what we'll ultimately see from the number one car in the game in terms of top speed. So, you know, it's not it's not that far away. When we're, it's quite tightly packed. We've got 30 vehicles that are all within 10 miles per hour of the best. So top speed isn't quite as a big of a difference or such a huge impact as it is for the supercars class. Um, and obviously when it comes to races and stunt races and long high speed races, I always say that top speed is something that you want to focus on a little bit more, especially when it comes to stunt races, because stunt races are more likely to have stopped top speed sections, more wide open areas. You do still need some levels of traction around that to get around some corners, but you know, long tubes and long top speed sections are more indicative of what you'd likely to see in uh, stunt races. So this is the kind of thing that you want to be looking at. But as I always say, you need to sort of take the track of for what it is and look at the track and then decide based on the lap times and based on the top speed, which car is going to be right for that track. So we're here with the Alpha in 26th place with 117.8 miles per hour. And then in 25th, just into the top 25 is the Elegy RH8. Obviously the ultimate dominant vehicle when it comes to lap time this only has a top speed of 118.5 miles per hour which isn't too much slower than what we will ultimately see at the top but it does show the weakness of the elegy in regards to its top speed same with the jester here in 23rd place and the best year we are already seeing quite a few vehicles that made it into the top 10 the Elegy Retro Custom is a prime example of that which we saw quite a bit earlier with a much much lower top speed. The, a lot of the top 10 vehicles in terms of lap time aren't necessarily that great in terms of top speed either and remarkably the Futo here in 22nd place is able to have a top speed that is so high even higher than some of the top vehicles in the game when it comes to lap time and, and racing ability so you know you've got to keep that into keep keep that in mind when you're choosing which car is best for you. Just a race car here, we're in 20th place, 119.3. Like I said, we've got quite a few vehicles that are all all share the same top speed. And specifically in this section of the video, a lot of vehicles share the top speed of 119 point something miles per hour. The Rapid GT Cabrio, exactly the same as the Rapid GT that we're going to see in 18th place, 119.5. And then I think there's six vehicles that all share the same top speed of 119.5. Obviously, we saw three vehicles at 119.3. So in reality, you want to, when, when it comes to choosing vehicles that are in this area from, say, 25th place to, I don't know, 5th place or something like that, you can really just choose the ones that are best around the track because their top speed differences are so small 
the the variation that you have under standard racing conditions are just going to make that pretty much equal anyway so you know it doesn't really matter if a car has 0.25 of a mile per hour quick at top speed um, in a racing situation that's not really going to make a whole lot of difference it's only when we get to the top few cars where we'll see bigger differences that might actually make a, a significant difference in a racing situation so yeah the carbon is there the comet all these vehicles all have the same top speed of 119.5 miles per hour just to point out like i said in the supercars video I think it might have actually been the motorcycles video. The, uh, the 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 values that I put on the screen are actually rounded up a little bit, so they are in uh, values of 0.25. So if you see uh, 119.3, that actually means 119.25. 119.8 is actually 119.75. It's just to make it a little bit easier for you to watch. As you can see in 14th place, the Fauta 119.5, again, sharing exactly the same top speed as the, the Rapid GT and all this kind of stuff. And then just ahead in 13th place, we've got the 9F Cabrio with a 0.25 mile per hour increase, uh, exactly the same as the 9F regular version, as we'll see uh, in 12th place as well. Uh, and like I said, such very similar top speeds that in various different circumstances around the regular a lap, a regular track, these top speeds are barely going to make a difference from a racing standpoint. So the 9F could be a good contender in stunt races because all-wheel drive vehicles do tend to be a little bit better in tubes when it comes to stunt races, but ultimately it is still only in 12th place, missing out on the top 10. Uh, and we've still got quite a few vehicles to go that are all close together in terms of top speed. Furora GT actually putting in a good performance here with uh, its top speed of 120.3 miles per hour. We've finally got a vehicle that's broken that 120 mile per hour barrier. Just missing out on the top 10 though, but considering how low down it is in the in terms of lap time, it does have a decent top speed. And we're actually going to see that in terms of the top 10. Quite a few vehicles that are quite low down in terms of lap time are actually quite high up in terms of top speed. The Serrano isn't one of those. The Serrano is very good in both situations, uh, making it into the top 10 in terms of top speed with 121.0 mile per hour. Um, again, pretty decent and another section, another start of another section where we're gonna see a lot of vehicles that share very similar top speeds. Ninth place here with the Comet Retro Custom. A difficult one to drive around a regular track, but 121.3 miles per hour is a very high top speed and it can do very well in that respect. It seems like the DLC vehicles more so are focused on having high top speeds, whereas original vehicles that were originally in the game tend to be more focused on you know lap time performance and things like that. There is certainly more of a prevalence for DLC vehicles to have a higher top speed um, and, and I think that's probably just to make them worthwhile and worth the money at least in some respect because the vast majority of people probably only care about top speed same here as we're seeing with the spectre custom with 121.3 exactly the same as the comet retro custom that we've just seen and in seventh place just ahead of it we've also got the regular spectre which has exactly the same top speed as the spectre custom the spectre custom is slower around the track as we saw yesterday in the, the lap time testing video and I will be coming out with a video explaining why that is. But in terms of top speed, they are exactly the same. So you're not really actually gaining anything from upgrading it at Benny's into the custom version. Um, but obviously you are with the Comet Retro Custom, which is a little bit quicker than the Comet. So in sixth place, we've got the Lynx. This is the most expensive vehicle in the sports class with a ridiculous price tag of $1.735 million. And although it is actually absolutely terrible uh, in terms of regular racing, it does at least have some something going for it with a top speed of 121.5 miles per hour. Just missing out on the top five, but I still don't think it's really worth the money. So coming into the top five, we've got the Falira with a top speed of 121.8 miles per hour. Like I said, they're all very close around this, this area. The Falira is not too bad in terms of lap time performance, but it has a very good top speed as well, which helps it out and th this actually shares the same top speed as what we'll see from the fourth and third place vehicles so third fourth and fifth all share the same top speed of 121.8 miles per hour fourth place we've got the regular massacro and it's probably you probably already know what is going to be in third place as well at this point again 121.8 miles per hour decent top speed the massacro is the 
highest rated vehicle in terms of lap time and top speed if you take both of them into account so it's a very very good all-rounder the Masakro and certainly a good recommendation if you do want a good all-round vehicle that's going to be uh, doing well in both situations obviously in third place we've got the Masakro race car with the same top speed again of 121.8 doesn't really matter which one you have between the race car or the normal version they're pretty much the same and just to point out that when it comes to tyres when they do have tied top speeds like this the, the tyres are settled by which one is quicker around the circuit, so just to keep that in mind. Now in second place, we've got the 770. We actually do have a little bit more of a gap at this point. Finally, we've got some distance between some cars. With 123.5 miles per hour, it's almost 2 miles per hour quicker than the Masakro in third place. And the 770 is very, very good in top speed, and, and it could be a good option for stunt races. Has a very good top speed, and it's not too bad around the track either. So, you know, very good performance there. But ultimately, the number one vehicle in the sports class in terms of top speed is the Shafter V12 with 124.3 miles per hour. This is a very, very quick vehicle in terms of top speed. It's, uh, it, it is only a little bit less than one mile per hour quicker than the 770, so there's not all that much to choose between them, but they are also relatively close in terms of uh, lap time performance and cornering ability and things like that. The 770 is probably the more all-round version between the two, but then the Masakro is probably the more all-round version between all three of them in terms of when you're looking at the top three. So yeah the shaft of v12 is ultimately the quickest though and it will do you very well in high high speed races and, and races that have a lot of long straights as we can see here between the comparison it's pretty crazy the difference in, in the speed between the shaft of v12 and the chameleon and just something to point out that you know all i can do with these videos is give you the information ultimately it's for you to decide what is going to be better around a track uh, whatever kind of track you're racing on whether it has high top speed sections or a lot of cornering or what is going to be better for you personally just because somebody is in a uh, Felter, for example it doesn't mean to say that you can't beat that in something that's slower like a coquette or a carbon is there if you are a better driver it's only when you come up against someone who's a very very good driver in a very very good car that you will start to struggle and those are the results that i'm showing for you but like i say all the information about this and the lap time testing videos are always in the description of each video so check those out but uh, yeah that's pretty much it so Remember to obviously read the description, like I said, for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more as we go through all the classes in terms of lap time and top speed. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.